Hi guys, Dane here, and today I just wanted to take a look at 10 indie authors who I'd recommend. Spoiler alert, one of them is me, because, you know, that's how these lists work. So throughout the years I've been sent a bunch of books by different indie authors, I'm also friends with a bunch of indie authors as well. Assume that there is some sort of relationship between myself and each of the authors on this list, because... There probably is, even if it's just that they've sent me a book or something. But a lot of these I've bought myself as well, because I like to try and support my fellow indie authors. I was going to do this alphabetically, but I'm just going to pick indie authors out at random and go through 10 of them in a list. There's no particular order to this. I'm going to tell you a little bit about their work, share some of their books, and let me know if you like this sort of thing, because I have plenty more indie authors I can talk about, and so I might do more of these videos. Who knows? So author number one is S.H. Jucker. I think that's how you pronounce the surname. And basically, uh, S.H. Jucker has written a bunch of sci-fi novels that follow the story of these silver ships. So the first one is The Silver Ships, and then there's Meridian and Libra as well. I'm not sure which order that comes in. Let me just check that. Okay, yeah. So the Silver Ship series is The Silver Ships. This one. Followed by Libra. Followed by uh, Meridian. And then there's another one called Hellebore, which I haven't read yet. But what's interesting about this, this is kind of indie sci-fi, I guess. And um, what I like is that while it is about alien races and stuff, it's quite a lot about collaboration. So I don't want to go into too many spoilers. And obviously there are at least four books in the series and possibly more now. Um, but basically it all follows a guy called Alex Racine. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he is a ship captain. He's an explorer tug captain. And basically he detects this other life form and then the rest of the series is kind of about the interplays between these different life forms and how they have to work together against a common enemy and that kind of stuff. And so some people have actually criticized these for not being as kind of action heavy as other sci-fi books. It's much more about actually the collaboration between these species. But I actually find that quite interesting and I think it sends out quite a hopeful message. So yeah, that's S.H. Jucker. This is a trilogy, it's the Horaeth trilogy by Liz Riley Jones. And we've got Horaeth, A Mark Mark, which is book one. Book two is Horaeth, A Burden Back. And Horaeth, and book three is Horaeth, A Lost Cold. And I believe, yeah, each of my copies of these is signed. Maybe the first one. That's right, so the first one, I got sent the first one of these years and years ago when I was first starting my book blog. And I enjoyed it so much that when I was offered books two and three later on, I decided to take those as well. And they're signed, which is super cool. I don't know if you'd, it's not necessarily an indie book because it is published by Matador, but in terms of how well known these books are, it's certainly on the <laughs> indie scale of the kind of recognition it's got, I think. And these are kind of almost YA books about a character called Mona Jones, and it's all set in Wales, but there's a big kind of Celtic influence, not just from Wales, but from Scotland and Ireland as well. And it's almost, I would say, magical realism. So let me read the blurb from the first book, because obviously I don't want to go into books two and three, but they just continue the adventure, and uh, you get really attached to the characters as well. Mona Jones has been on the run all her life without knowing why. Her parents were murdered, and now, at 21, her uncle and protector is dead too. The chain of events compels her to spend time amid a Welsh-speaking community in Nsmon. I think that's how you say it, I'm not Welsh, which is Anglesey. Here, her druidic ancestry begins to emerge, though it is spotted more quickly by those around her. She is branded by an enemy druid and finds herself at the centre of a druidic civil war. And that's a pretty good blurb, really, for capturing what this is about, but I can't, there are kind of... You would have the inevitable comparison to something like Harry Potter, for example, and it is on the YA kind of scale of things, but it's a bit more gritty, I would say. I mean, not just in terms of people dying, but people dying quite horribly, and there's like... You know, it, it asks a lot of questions about society that I don't think Harry Potter went that deep into because it's a lot of the darker aspects are covered here. And I think that's pretty cool. Okay, author number three is Michael Israel Jarvis. And he's written a bunch of different books. The first one that I read was Grave Digger. This was actually later picked up by Booktrope Publishing, um, which was a company that published some of my books as well. And I kind of referred Mr. Jarvis. So he's got an updated version of this now with a uh, like shiny new cover and um, really nice editing and all that kind of stuff in as well. My copy here is signed. His signature is signed tiny from 2013. So this one, Grave Digger, is about 
almost an anti-hero called Perrin, who he's, he's literally a grave digger, and so it's kind of, it's described as like spades and sorcery, so it's sword and sorcery, except he uses a spade as his weapon, and his profession is a grave digger. So that one's probably my favourite of the lot, because it was the first I read. We've also got The Maker's Bloodline, Land Rising. Uh, Land Rising is the first book in this series, I'm not sure if more are out yet. And this is more, I would say, kind of hardcore fantasy, whereas uh, Grave Diggers, it is, it is fantasy, but it's... I don't know, I, I don't know how I'll, it's more like fantasy and intrigue in Gravedigger and like all politics of the world and that kind of stuff. Whereas I found um, Land Rising to be more literally big battles and you know, tr your typical take on epic fantasy, I think. And then Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer, which um, this one's kind of quirky. The blurb is London, England, 1864. Twelve year old Edward Sachs has just become a murderer. The criminal underworld he enters is full of mysterious characters, none cutting a greater dash than Osric Fingerbone, alchemist and expert killer. So this is the most recent one I read and uh, I definitely recommend this one as well. To be honest, all of the books in this video are pretty impressive and worth checking out. These two here are by Larry Weiner. Larry Weiner used to be an advertising man, so I kind of relate to him because I used to work in marketing. And he distills that beautifully into this series. This cover, actually, he designed this cover himself for Paradise Rot. So you have Paradise Rot, book two is Once Again with Blood. And I can't remember the title of the third one, but it is a trilogy. And they're all set on different islands. And it basically follows this company as they buy these islands, you know, run advertising campaigns to get people to go to those islands. But it turns out they're full of monsters. So in Paradise Rot, it was zombies. Once again with blood is obviously vampires and I think the third one might be werewolves. These two, they're kind of like, they are kind of horror but they're kind of farcical horror. It's like Shaun of the Dead in a novel form I guess and um, like they make you laugh out loud but also they're just a badass plot. And if you've ever worked in marketing, that's a bonus too. So these are by Duncan Ralston. As you can probably, <laughs> this makes him look like a really disturbed individual but he is a nice guy. This is Gristle and Bone which is a collection of short stories and yes that is a heart on a plate on the cover. So this has got seven stories, Baby Teeth, Beware of Dog, Viral, Artifact 37, End User, Fat of the Land and Scavengers. And yeah, they're all kind of, I guess they're all a little bit foodie based. In some extent, for example, Fat of the Land, a young couple discovers the secret of a tourist town's prosperity may lie in its sinfully delicious cuisine. So that's Duncan Ralston's short story collection. He also has this, which is Womb, which Womb is kind of like a novella within a novella. So if you've ever read a book where within the story, the characters tell another story, this is kind of what happens. And um, yeah, this is quite disturbing. I mean, you've got Think there's a coat hanger on the rear cover for example and it's called womb and that's written with an umbilical cord yeah you kind of know what to expect here then we've got Hans M Hershey or just I just call him Hans Hershey although I guess he always publishes with the N I don't know why so Hans first sent me Willem of the Taffel which is kind of a post-apocalyptic novel um, it's kind of about after the big accident when they tried to rebuild society but what's interesting about Hans books is that uh, he's like an LGBT writer in the his characters are generally LGBT, but it's not really a big part of the story. So I guess there is, there's kind of an, um, you know, M slash M. How, how do you say that out loud? I've only ever seen that written down. There's like a male male romance as part of this story, but the the vast, vast majority of the book is just about rebuilding society after this, um, this awful thing. I believe um, basically the civilization in this are hiding inside a mountain and then Willem decides to go outside and see what's cracking and uh, that's where the plot really takes off. He's written loads more books and I've only got a few of them but this one's The Opera House so this one's more about an architect and uh, yeah his relation with a street a relationship with a street kid that he finds kind of a father-son relationship going on yeah so after the death of his own son Raphael's kind of torn up about it and then he sees meets a street kid and kind of sees a, a possibility for a second chance there and then the Fallen Angels of Karnataka. This one is, I think, maybe slightly more autobiographical. I've got to say, I can't really remember this book, but I do remember really enjoying it at the time. Still young and mourning the loss of his lover, Hakon is not ready to give up on his dreams. So when a rich Englishman offers him the chance to join him on a tour of the world, Hakon takes it, daring to believe that his dream is finally coming true. But at what price? So yeah, I mean, I don't tend to read specific genres. I like to just read authors that I think can write a good story. And Hans can definitely write a good story. But equally, if you are into LGBT books, as an indie author himself, I'm sure uh, Hans would appreciate some support. 
This one's a High Wycombe author, so from the same town as me. This is Ollie Jacobs. He's currently uh, doing a kind of a crowdsourcing campaign, but Ollie's got about a dozen books out. For example, he has a bunch of Film It Cuts books out, like this one, and these are um, short story collections. This one's a hardback copy, and if you meet him in person, he'll even sign it and number it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's some pretty cool short stories in this, and he kind of experiments a little bit with um, th like the traditional way you should tell a story and the layout of it. Strange Days in High Wycombe is literally set in my hometown. Uh, I'll read you the blurb. You've just woken up with the worst hangover known to man, a mysterious blonde by your side and a hairy ruffian in the living room. What do you do? Well, if you're a guy, you head to the pub. And so this is all entirely set in High Wycombe. I mean, it might not make as much sense to you if you're not from around these parts. And um, I think some, it's interesting because I've seen one bad review of it where they kind of said, um, you know, that the main character is a bit of a bit of a chauvinist, a bit of a bell end. But he's kind of meant to be a bit of a bell end, you know. I think <laughs> we all are in, in our ways. So these two are by Adrian Baldwin. I actually got this first one, Barnacle Brat which is a dark com comedy for grown-ups. I got this as a Secret Santa thing uh, one Christmas. So Adrian got me as his Secret Santa on this Twitter Secret Santa and sent me a copy of the book, which is pretty cool. He's also sent me his... Uh, oh no, I bought the follow-up, Stanley McLeod Must Die, um, which I haven't read that one yet, but I know that I'm a character in it and I get murdered, so I'm looking forward to that. In Barnacle Brat, if you don't like clowns, you're going to find it scary because there is kind of a crazy clown in it. But like, like it says on the blurb, I mean, it's a dark comedy, so it's it's funny, but it's also scary in places, I guess. Another horror author here, we have J.G. Clay, and J.G. Clay used to be on my imprint of Book Trope as well. I actually used to be his book manager. So he's got Tales of Blood and Sulphur, which is a collection of short stories, um, which I helped him to market this book as well. And so I guess I'm still doing that by promoting it in this video. But it is, again, an excellent collection of horror shorts. And then Peace and Quiet Time and Space, which is a novel. And it's very interesting to me anyway. It reminds me of like, um, almost like William Burroughs or someone like that. It's like, it's, it's very, um, it's difficult to read, but it's also enjoyable to read. And finally, of course, we have this chap called Dane Cobain, who is me. And I have a bunch of books out. I'm on low battery, so I'll whiz through. But I have No Rest for the Wicked, which is a supernatural thriller. Formerly literary fiction about a social networking site for the dead. Eyes like lighthouses when the boats come home, collected poems. Gotta beat that battery timer. Come on up to the house, which is a horror novella and screenplay. Social paranoia, how consumers and brands can stay safe in a connected world, which is non-fiction. And then subject verb object, which is an anthology of new writing. And actually it has some of these authors in, like it's got Ollie Jacobs in and JG Clay, for example. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and also I've got a new book coming out soon called Driven, which you should totally buy. And anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if any of these books take your fancy. And also if you'd like me to do another one of these, because I'm always happy to give shout outs to indie authors, because I think they need the most. In the meantime, don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.